Oh, call of duty, launches than you will lay. Activision has failed. This trash pile is steaming. 153 gigs, and the mission design is the laziest work. No checkpoints left me seething. Now my truck's in the air, glitching out everywhere. Here's proof in my mind. Activision don't care. Oh, save all of your money for this fee. Can't be waived Cause this game got 17 They've just dug their own grave It's for the boys This is for soap I stand before you today as a humbled veteran of the Call of Duty franchise. I've done three full tours of modern warfare, as you can see here. And after the third game, I'm just not so sure I'm going to be the same after all that I've witnessed. Because it was that bad. Modern Warfare 3 has got to be the absolute worst campaign in Call of Duty history. And that's saying a lot when you stack it up to World War II, Ghosts, Black Ops 4, and Vanguard. Modern Warfare 3 feels like an unfinished product, because it is. Usually they spend about three years on a Call of Duty title, but this time they only spent one. They had seven studios working on this thing just to shove it out the door as quickly as possible, and it shows. Although, it's pretty difficult for me to get angry in this case because the writing was on the wall the entire time. When they announced that they'd be making a third Modern Warfare within the span of just one year, I felt pretty confident that it wouldn't turn out to be very good. So as much as I do want my money back for this... That is my money! I fought for it! I earned it! I'm also partially at fault. Maybe we all are. Because, I mean, if we all buy this game and it does well, then what kind of message are we sending to Activision? Because it doesn't matter if the game is terrible. If it sells well enough, then they'll probably just do this again. And I really hope they don't, because I was bewildered by just how bad Modern Warfare 3 turned out to be. So in this video, I'm gonna be getting up on my soapbox and going over just how bad this game actually is. I'm gonna stab it in its jugular, look into its eyes as I watch it perish before me, because 70 bucks is a high price to pay for such a malignant product. I feel like we gamers need to rise up and go to war with Activision. Why, hello. My name is Thomas Jeffierson, and I've much to tell you about war. Thunder, today's sponsor. And I must make the declaration that War Thunder offers a lot of independence to its players, with more than 2,000 tanks, helicopters, aeroplanes, and ships. And do I dare question how or why the ship is sailing without a sail? In dynamic PvP battles, nonetheless? Why, with that many vehicles, this very well may be the most expansive vehicle combat game ever made. Much like the members of Parliament, some vehicles are over 100 years old, offering the player a good bit of history. History. Each vehicle is supremely detailed, made to be as accurate to the real thing as possible. And I dare say that looks quite real to me. And you need not any extra hardware to play either. You can control every vehicle with a keyboard and a mouse, which back in my day was a quill and a hanky. If you don't download War Thunder immediately, you will be humiliated by way of tarring and feathering. So you'd better download it straight away on your Xbox, PlayStation, or personal computer for absolutely no charge. Yes, that's right, old boys, it's free. I chose to play on Hardened this year because playing on Veteran is simply just not fun and it never has been. It's not difficult or challenging, it's just tedious and this game needed all the help it could get. The first mission was almost pretty cool. I was really trying to invest myself in it too. The air duct, stand by. Right, looking for collectibles. I'm gonna find me a collectible. Nothing here. Let's go find more collectibles. It had us breaking into a prison, but in doing so, I became temporarily trapped in my own personal prison. On it. 
No, I'm stuck. Got him. I'm stuck. Then I started to get a bad feeling about this game, because in the very first combat encounter, the enemies never even bothered shooting back at me, or even shooting back in my general direction. They stood there and let me kill them. But whatever, right? It's tutorial. So then we start up a prison riot to make our entry much easier for our team, which reminded me of Extraction 2. See, Call of Duty loves stealing action scenes from movies, and in a world where Infinity Ward had more time to make this game, I could see them translating this entire scene to this mission, which would have been pretty cool. And if you haven't seen Extraction 2, it has some pretty good action scenes, and I'd say go check it out on Netflix. But my heart pumped with adrenaline as I made my way through a prison riot. A mattress fell to the ground while prisoners raged in a cage. And then I realized how uneventful this feels. How nothing really mattress. Usually Call of Duty intros are high octane and bombastic. But all we got going on right now is essentially set dressing that is happening out of bounds. I have no involvement in what's happening. Detonation. And it turns out that we're not the good guys. Got eyes on a cigarette. We're working for the Ruskies, and we're here to free the villain, Makarov, from his prison cell. For me, it's a big honor, Commander Makarov. Okay, so things have to start picking up now that we need to escape from this prison, right? With such a high-value target. I got him. Or maybe the game will just play itself. That's fine, too. Up and let's move. Ooh, baby. I must say, the shooting in this game does feel stellar. That shotgun packs some heat, so at least we got that going for us. Ah! Idiot. Clear. The rest of the mission just has us doing another firefight while the enemies, again, don't even bother shooting back at me. Then we run away and jump into some water. If this is Modern Warfare 3's idea of a Call of Duty set piece, then we're in a lot of trouble. The second mission started out with a cool premise. I had this big open hub and was meant to tackle two objectives in any order I wanted. It even had a Metroidvania aspect to it as there were ropes I could go up after I found an item called the Rope Ascender. On top of that, there were 20-something items to discover here. And since I could approach this any way I wanted to, I decided to complete these objectives using stealth only. But after a few minutes of wandering around, I wound up getting caught. So I went to reload my last checkpoint only to be thrown into the beginning of the mission via a loadout screen. What? Just let me play the game. Don't, what are we doing here? D stop it. I w stop it. Stop. What are we doing? Don't, I... God damn it. And yeah, that was kind of annoying, but all of the items and weapons I picked up before reloading the last checkpoint were immediately available to me upon restarting. So this is like weird. It's almost sort of like a roguelite, but without any of the RNG. It, I, it doesn't feel fully thought out. But then after about three to four minutes of progressing towards my first objective, I died. Only to once again be sent to the very beginning of the mission. Wait, no way, I, I can't even die. Oh my God. I lost all of my progress and it became immediately apparent to me that they didn't even have enough time to construct a proper linear level with checkpoints and set pieces. So instead they just gave us a map filled with a bunch of toys to goof around in and that is cool to a certain extent. Like I found this car in a cargo container and cargo fast, but there really wasn't anything I could do with the car. This area is far too small to viably use a vehicle and the car handling felt terrible. I feel like this car handles better than the car in the game. There were just items strewn about without much thought or care. A UAV, sentry turrets, a mosquito thing, which I have no clue what this even does. Mosquitoes active! And tons of super powerful weapons. And I mean, it's cool that I'm being given a lot of toys to experiment with and I have a quote unquote reason to explore, but at the same time, it just feels so lazy. It felt like they just put a bunch of objectives and enemy AI on a multiplayer map. In fairness though, I did find quite the thrill in knowing that if I died, I'd most likely have to play the entire mission over again. But this also means that I'm punished for experimenting with different playstyles. Because if I die, I lose so much time. So all I'm ever gonna use are the best guns that I find. And stealth is always gonna be the best option. 
at least until I get caught. But shooting everybody isn't viable either because they just send in reinforcements, so the enemies are pretty much unlimited. And to finish this mission, I planted a GPS tracker on these cargo crates that have missiles in them, and then the enemy literally just drove them away despite having just practically watched me place the tracker on them. But whatever, the next mission will be better, right? I like the idea of having a big hub to explore in a Call of Duty mission, but only for maybe one or two missions total, and certainly not for two missions in a row. Yet I was given another open hub to explore, but this time with three objectives to tackle in any order I desired. At this point, I'm deeply concerned that this is how every mission in the game is going to be. And here I am, 30 minutes into my playthrough, and I already wanted to put this game down. Roger, moving to Overwatch. You know what, Captain? That's a pretty good idea. Wow, play of the game. Great job, Run Reviews. So I'm required to blow up three helicopters. First thing I do is a little trick I learned from playing Battlefield. Plant C4 on a truck, drive it over a ramp, and... But the truck got stuck under the helicopter. Then it started flinging itself all over the place and wound up destroying the frame rate. And then I started rubber banding, which has never happened to me outside of an online multiplayer match. A little bit later, I stumbled on an outpost that allowed me to airdrop a vehicle into the battlefield. And then I couldn't help but wonder why my team couldn't just airdrop a bomb on all three of these helicopters. But it's Call of Duty, right? We're not supposed to think. So I hopped into that car. Because when you give me a swath of options to choose from, I'm always gonna go with the option that practically breaks the game, because it's the most time efficient. Plus, I don't wanna die only to have to destroy the first helicopter all over again, and show you guys how bullshit this game is. So I drove to where I could see the helicopter, got into my turret, and unloaded on the chopper. And as I was sitting here shooting at this helicopter, completely uncontested with a powerful gun that has unlimited ammo, I couldn't help but wonder why these people don't just move their helicopters to someplace else. And this is where things got sad. I of course used the very same tactic for the third and final helicopter, but the mission threw a twist at me. I was attacked by a fourth helicopter that nearly killed me. This is where I found an exploit that, if I'm close to death, I could just swap to a different seat and the helicopter couldn't hurt me, allowing me to fully regain my health. So I did that a few times, took pot shots at the helicopter, and switched seats to heal up. I mean, like, what, what are you guys doing? Did you even play test this? This is so sad, man. I, I found socks on the ground that offered up more substance than this encounter. To my surprise, I actually did get a checkpoint after this. And then we go into a reactor room where the game throws a pathetic excuse of a set piece at us as a rafter wiggles, causing chemicals to spill on the ground and a bunch of guys spawn in. Then we escape, but we don't escape unscathed. Drop my hand. Come. Come. Stay with us, sir. Six two to watch out. We need medevac. Uh oh. Looks like he's paid the price. Man, when I saw Captain Price laying there like that, I thought he had gone fishing for one last time. That I had lost another brother. I don't know if I could handle that. But 30 seconds later, he turned out to be fine. What? Morning, sir. <laughs> Thank you, great. All right. I gotta be honest with you guys. Ordinarily, it takes Sledgehammer, Treyarch, and Infinity Ward three years to make a Call of Duty game. But as we all know, Activision had them put this game out in just one year. And ordinarily, it takes me three to six weeks to make a video for this channel, but I took a page out of Activision's book and I decided to make this video in just one week as an experiment. I don't think I'm gonna be doing this again anytime soon either. It's been incredibly stressful because I've tried my best to ensure that the quality of this video isn't restricted by that time constraint, but it's also given me some insight into how the developers have probably felt over the past year. I'm certain that much like Soap's Ashes, they've spread themselves far too thin. I know I have. I've had to completely rethink how I make videos in order to get this one out on time. I've lost track of the days, I haven't talked to anybody really, and I haven't even gone outside with the exception of, you know, 
like this. Because this little guy here has barely gotten any attention lately. No, look at me. Yes. But this is a one-time deal. I certainly won't be doing this again anytime soon. Because making content so quickly like this is simply just not sustainable. Eventually, I would burn out. Much like Call of Duty has. But I mean, how perfect would it be for me to upload this video on Veterans Day weekend? I mean, this is my weekend after all. And because of my act of valor, I fully expect you guys to thank me for my service as a Call of Duty veteran down in the comments. Because this game only gets worse. Time constraint really makes itself apparent for these next three missions, and for this video. Because you see, I didn't have enough time to craft a good segue into the fourth mission, so this sentence will have to do. Luckily, we didn't have a huge open hub to explore. I could tell by the fact that I was given a checkpoint for once. But like the two before it, this was another stealth mission. This time I could mark the enemies with a scout drone, and as you can see, I kinda have this big open hub world that I can explore, but with just one objective. So I guess it's not really all that different, is it? This whole mission, or rather this entire game, feels like a watered down version of Call of Duty, which is already a watered down version of first person shooter games. It's the video game equivalent of LaCroix. I mean, this was so uneventful. Farah had to open this door and I thought, okay, cool. I'm probably gonna have to defend her from bad guys while she gets it open. Doors open. Never mind. As we were attempting to defuse the bomb here, I thought that maybe I would have to play some kind of mini game in order to disarm it like I did in Modern Warfare 2, but no don't do anything at all. Then it introduces a new juggernaut type enemy which posed absolutely no threat. Then it threw a time limit at me to ratchet up the stakes, but I was able to complete my objective with a minute to spare. All of this felt so unbelievably sloppy. Everything it tried to do was embarrassing and underbaked. Here, I am a lady in disguise. I walk through an enemy military base completely uncontested. Steal a keycard from this guy completely uncontested. He's down. Target eliminated, keycard secured. Perhaps it's because I'm wearing camouflage that I'm invisible to them. Or maybe it's because I'm a woman. I walk inside of the military base, take off my hat of course, go inside of a closet, watch a cutscene, the missiles hit this base, I run out of it and that's it, it's over. I beat this mission in like two and a half minutes. I spent more time watching the cutscenes than I did actually playing the damn game. If they had more time to work on this level, I could see it being kinda like that KGB mission from Cold War, where you were given several different methods of completing your objective. It had depth, it encouraged exploration, and it required you to think. Modern Warfare 3 requires nothing more than patience. This one was pretty cool. Once again, I am a lady, but this time I am not in disguise. This bad man is gonna make me look like a terrorist, but I don't let him. I hit the equals key to take him down. Get out of my way, lady. I gotta prove that I'm not a terrorist. An invincible man bursts through the curtains and flashes me with a bang. Makarov straps a bomb onto me, and Big Mac seems genuinely intimidating here. Then he jumps out of the plane. Why don't I jump out with him and save all these poor souls on board? Good question. With 30 seconds left until the bomb goes off, this guy hands me a gun and tosses the phone out onto the aisle. And you guys know me, I was more than ready to shoot everybody on this plane. I really liked this mission because it felt dramatic. It felt like Infinity Ward was actually trying to do something gutsy, which they didn't do for Modern Warfare 2. I paused the game here so that I could write in my script and talk smack about it behind its back when I saw that I had 10 items to discover, which meant that we were back to the old classic open world hub segment yet again. And man, this just sucks. Things were just starting to pick up. I can't do another one of these right now. I need to take another break and eat a star spangled banana. All right, check this out. I got a Microsoft issued care package. They gave me Doritos, Mountain Dew, hmm, really cool, a pack of cigarettes, Whoa, and a gun. Yeah, but uh, looks like they didn't give me a lighter. Not that I need one. <laughs> yeah, works every time. But I swore to myself that I was done with smoking. I, I, I don't want to do this stuff anymore. But my God, Modern Warfare 3 is just so miserable that I feel like I have no choice but to smoke just so that I can feel something. But not today. I don't need this no more. That's right. At least I still got my Mountain Dew. I love this stuff. 
somehow this is Activision's fault. Of this game's 14 missions, six of them give you an open area to mess around in, and the formula is exactly the same for all six of them. You sneak around until you get caught, then you kill everybody who's hassling you while you make your way to the objective. And to make matters worse, two of the linear missions are stealth-focused as well, so a majority of your time is spent sneaking. When I play a Call of Duty game, I don't want stealth. I want big, dumb action spectacle. What makes the Call of Duty campaigns interesting is the variety of gameplay scenarios it throws at you, like those breach and clear missions that we had in Modern Warfare 1, which I thought were actually kinda great. We didn't get any varied gameplay scenarios like we did in pretty much every other COD campaign. In fact, for the first time in Call of Duty history, I don't think Modern Warfare 3 even has a single on-rails section. Okay, yes, technically the subway station at the end has rails in it, but don't get smarmy with me, you son of a bitch. Instead, nearly every mission in this game has a heavy emphasis on stealth. And any time the game does try to throw any variety into the mix, it just fails miserably. Like at the end of this mission, the guy who was giving me covering fire got ambushed and needed my help. Well, consider yourself assisted. At this point in my playthrough, the formula for these missions has become as stale and tired as Call of Duty itself. So, in each of these weapons free levels, you need to find the same items, like the Ascender and two armor slots. And you need to find these every single time. Because nothing you found in the previous mission carries over to the next level. So this is nothing more than game padding, adding to the overall tedium. And the AI is trash. I feel like I say the same thing every year. Enemies have their backs to me. They rush me in a straight line. When I'm low on health, they don't aggress. There are multiple times where if they had half a brain, they would have had me dead to rights. But they're worthless. In fact, I'm pretty sure one of them threw a grenade at himself. And then the linear missions are so uneventful and underwhelming that what we're left with is Call of Duty's most boring campaign. It's so flat and lifeless that it almost feels like we didn't even get a Call of Duty game this year. I never thought that I would be looking back at the Vanguard campaign with rose-tinted glasses thinking about how good we had it. But that's where we're at now. I do not care anymore at all. Really all this mission was, was three combat arenas. At one point I got a sniper rifle and shot at a bunch of guys underneath me, and they barely even bothered shooting back. I sh look at that, I'm shooting fish in a barrel here. For the final encounter, I barely even had to try. Multiple vehicles rushed us, but I picked up a grenade launcher that they just put here for me and destroyed all of them before anyone could even shoot me. I don't think they put very much thought into this mission. I guess we can slow things down a little bit here with a AC-130 mission. And I know it's a hot take, but I've never enjoyed these AC-130 sections. I get that it's a cool power fantasy, but I've never found this to be engaging at all. It's far too easy, and I feel like I'm practically God, because I'm up in the clouds, I can never die, and I have the biggest guns. The boys on the ground practically worship me, and no one would ever dare cross me. Okay, yes, this is the last mission. We are so close, let's do this. We're meant to tail this girl on the street, but we can't let her know that she's being followed, of course. So we gotta blend in by, oh, of course, smoking a cigarette. No matter what I do, I just can't seem to escape these darn things. I don't want them anymore. Get out of here. Good riddance. Look at that, see? That's what I'm talking about, right there. It, it it's, I don't know what to do. Everybody's looking at me like, ooh, they're shaming me because I smoke. I don't smoke anymore. I don't. It won't stop following me. I don't smoke anymore. <laughs> so for the final mission, I just ran through a subway tunnel killing people. I cheesed a juggernaut. The most difficult enemy type in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Oh wait, hang on guys, there's one more. Yeah, wow, good good game. Then we disarmed a bomb, which actually had a mini game this time around. Soap got cleaned up. Uh, 
Big Mac got away and they sprinkled soap suds. Then we roll credits. That was the longest three and a half hours of my life. And I've seen The Irishman. You know what? I take back what I said in the beginning of this video. I think I actually am angry. They charged me $70 for a short campaign with trash mission design, reused weapons and assets from previous games, boring missions, and a generic story that doesn't even get a proper ending. Sure, we disarmed the bomb, but the villain got away and we're gonna have to wait until Modern War 4 to see this thing through. The story made absolutely no attempt at deepening the characters, which sucks because Modern Warfare 2 really delved into the relationship between all of the boys and the 141. So I figured that this game would do a little bit more of that. Because if they had, it would have made Soap's death much more impactful. Instead, it just, like, happens, and that's all. The thing is, though, I don't really feel anything towards any of these characters at all. I care about as much about Ghost from Modern Warfare as I care about Ghost from Destiny. I care as much about Price as I care about the price of milk. I care as much about Soap as I care about Shampoo. I can't help but wonder why in God's name they released this campaign a week early. There's no way they thought this would actually move units. Seems like a pretty stupid idea to me. Because Vanguard didn't do well, Modern Warfare 2 didn't do well, apparently Call of Duty lost nearly 50 million players in one year due to the decline in quality. So instead of taking the time to go back to the drawing board and improve the quality, they dug themselves a deeper hole making each release worse than the one before it in a desperate attempt to keep the money rolling in. And if they continue like this, it's not gonna take long for the money to stop. People are gonna get fed up. They already are. The healthiest thing they could do is take a year or two off. Let the devs focus on making some high quality content. I think it goes without saying that we would all be more than willing to wait for something like that. And sure, keep pumping out new maps and updates to Warzone or whatever to keep people coming back if you need to. But please, for AC-130's sake, take a break from the annual releases, because it's getting old. And if there's one thing I can leave you guys with to take away from this video, it's that you should download War Thunder on PlayStation, Xbox, or computer. It's Thomas Jefferson approved, it's got real-time damage systems to tell you what happened to you when you got shot, and it's free to play. So use my link and check it out. And go check out the video I did last year on Modern Warfare 2. That one turned out really good. It has my favorite ad read that I've ever done. And that video is just kind of near and dear to my heart. And of course, I gotta thank the patrons and channel members. Each and every dollar I get from you guys goes straight back into this channel in the form of props, costumes, editing software, and that kind of thing. Do you remember how Modern Warfare 3 ended without an ending? Well, that's something I'd never do to you guys. So just remember...